Good morning folks, welcome along to a sunny Monday morning on the vlog. Been a good weekend, so on the weekend uh, England won the rugby, not completely, but they won the match. Uh, I managed to do a 5k for the first time this year, 33 minutes, not a bad time for a fat lad you know. And we also reflected on what we were going to do with the decking stroke scaffolding in the beer garden and uh, how we're going to rectify any issues that might happen and the direction we're going to go with it. So uh, we're going to start all of those things this week but we do have some beer to package maybe Wednesday and once that beer is packaged then I'll also be brewing some more. So I now need to get in touch with my hop supplier which is Brewers Select on this occasion because they have mosaic in stock and then I also need to speak to uh, my malt supplier, which is Total Brewing Supplies, basically out of Milestone Brewery. It's Munton's Malt. So I need to get some pale malt in, some hops in, and some USO5 yeast so I can brew some more beer. And uh, also, we've managed to collect or purchase a load more lovely smelly flowers. So over there we have quite a selection of herbs and lovely scented butterfly and bee attracting pollinators and uh, not pollinators, they're the bees. <laughs> uh, flowers ready to go into the beer garden for the summertime. Hopefully we'll have all the projects in there completed by then. But tomorrow, I may not be in the brewery, uh, Stuart's got an invite to a HB Clark's which is one of our suppliers. Um, for the pub, they've got a trade show on in York race at the race course. So I'm, I was in two minds whether to go or not because I've got stuff to do here. But screw it, we're going to jump on the train in the morning and we're going to go and have a bit of a jolly out to York race course. I'll take you with me, of course, and we'll see what that's all about. But as far as today goes, folks, I'm going to move all those flowers into the garden. And weather permitting, we're going to get them planted. And then we're also going to pull out uh, what hops and grain I do have and figure out what I need to order for the brew day the back end of the week. So I thought I'd just quickly run over some of the plants that we've got for the beer garden. Maybe some of you are into, the, into this, maybe some of you aren't. You can always skip the video forwards if not. And excuse me, I think I'm getting a little bit of a cold or something like that. I sound a little bit bunged up. Anyway, let's start over here. So we've got some verbascum, look, a little bee symbol, that's what we want. Some fresh thyme, some more thyme, some pot marjoram or oregano. In here we've got some uh, heleniums and, uh, well, whatever that's called, sedalsia. All of these attract pollinators. Got a bit of sage, two kinds, some rosemary of course, and uh, aubrecia, some sedum. Some Catanache, never heard of that one before, but uh, that's what she looks like. Uh, some more Aubrecia, some Gium, some Galadias, we've got them in the front garden, they're really nice. These bad boys are Cineraria, Cineraria, Silverdust, is that how you pronounce it? More Aubrecia, you'll all be having a good laugh at my pronunciation of these, uh, these scientific names for these flowers. Some Stachys or Stachys. Um, what are these bad boys? Asters, they look like Asters to me. So uh, yeah, some Asters. A few Hebes, nice coloured ones. Uh, this looks nice. Aresium. That looks nice. Another Aster. Um, this one I picked up just as we left. Uh, Doronesium. Doronesium. Nice big flowers already in springtime. So there's not a lot here, I think we've got uh, maybe 35 plants, but they are all perennials and they will all spread and grow obviously. So fingers crossed, this is now enough to fill that border up and make it look like an absolute blooming marvellous landscape. Right, I've spent, wind, spent a good couple of hours planting up and uh, the border looks really good. So we've got 
these herbs and flowers over here that I think will look better in a pot and then running along you can kind of see where I've put stuff in it's obviously all going to fill out in the next month or two and uh, look really nice I'm hoping I've got everything in the right place colour coordinated <clears throat> a little bit but we will see <coughs> Oh, excuse me, I've got a little bit of a peanut in the throat. So I thought these would actually look better in a pot because, uh, well, they're flowering already. So the plan is to take a couple of those plastic casks that we got from Boggart Hole and perhaps chop the tops off, fill them with compost, uh, drill some drainage holes in the bottom as well, and hopefully. Chance! Come on, boy. And hopefully they'll make some good planters. So uh, I'm going to go up here. Yeah, they're right up the top there. See so if we can get some of these plastic casks down. And we'll make a couple of planters from them. I'll try and pick the worst ones out as well. Oh, and also... Friggin' Bombay bad boy. Right, so I've got four of these green ones down. They've got the boggart stamp along the top here. I can't see any other writing on there to see who they would have belonged to before boggart bought them, but that doesn't really matter. So this one is in a real state of disrepair. It's not looking the healthiest of casks whatsoever. So I think what I'm gonna do is somehow figure out how to cut either the top off straight round here or cut the inside off. I think I might just uh, sit round here with a slitting disc and take it off proper. Uh, it'd be nice if I could keep the handles in. Anyway, I'll have a play with it. I'll draw some lines on there with a marker pen and we'll see, we'll see if we can uh, figure something out. And we'll also have to brighten this, uh, brighten this shot up a little bit. It's a wee bit dark. Called Choir Our School by the Tower. Anthony Zara has this report. Okay. Well, that's firing <laughs> molten plastic at my fingers. It's hot. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is put some gloves on. <laughs> that bloody hurt. We're in. We're in, it looks all right, I think. So uh, take you off the tripod, let's have a quick goose. So we've got the handles, if I need to lift the pot and move them anywhere, I don't actually think I'm gonna need them. And it'd be easier for me to cut the top off the cask without them and uh, well there's a little bit of beer should anybody want any so they're actually in good nick inside this is one of the reasons why I don't like these plastic casks though can you see that weld yeah that's where you feel the ridge there you're never really going to get that clean are you there's a bit there as well look so I just don't like them all round, so I think most of these are going to end up being planters of some type. So I'll just tidy this one up and uh, we'll come back and have a look once I've drilled some holes in the base. Well I'm pretty pleased with that actually, uh, the handles do come in handy so if I can continue to cut them like this then I will. And then you'll see at the bottom I've drawn a small grid uh, and then just drill some holes in there to allow for drainage. So I'll just throw a load of uh, broken pot, brick, whatever, rubble in the bottom to give it a bit of weight and give it a bit of drainage at the bottom of the uh, container and then we'll go ahead and fill this up with probably 30 litres of compost, put some plants into her. I think they'll look pretty good. All done in there. That's four of the kegs, the plastic kegs, all cut and drilled, ready to be filled up with some corn past. 
they look all right, don't they? I think they'll be nice little planters when we're finished. With one either side of the door. One maybe sat on this old old star scale. Quite a piece of kit, isn't it? And one somewhere else. Don't know where. We'll probably also pick up a few extra little flowers and something else I've all, all, also done. Um, Drain the frigging compressor. Oh, check it out. Yeah. Look at that. Grimy. So that's come out the bottom of the compressor in the in the cellar. Can't be good. Well, it's good now I've got it out there, but yeah, I've just told Stu, be careful, buddy, because if you uh, forget to drain it, it'll rust from the inside out, and then explode on you. And you don't want that to happen, because it totally kills people. So I'm just going to rinse this container out, because this is what I use for the Danish oil. And then when Stu gets back, we're going to go, sure at Radio 2, we're going to go to uh, the garden centre and pick up some compost for the plastic eggs. And whilst we're out, I'm going to see if I can pick up some hollow angle for the cold room. I know a lot of people are keen to see me finish this cold room, but while the weather's still nippy, and it is, then I don't need this yet, so it gives me time to get everything in place at a leisurely pace. So, in order for us to affix the doors to the front of here, and the doors are just going to be removable, they're not going to be sliding or hinged or anything like that. In order for me to fix the doors onto here, I'm going to add some hollow angle. So if you guys haven't heard of hollow angle before, it's what they use in the window trade. Uh, it's PVC, so if you go to any fascia or soffit suppliers, they're sure to have it in stock. If we pick some up today, I'll show you anyway. But uh, I'm just going to measure up. So basically we just need to go up, down and around each of these bays to figure out exactly how much we need. So we're going up, down and around. Up, around and down, should I say. Duh, duh, duh. Four times. So all I need to do effectively is measure that, which is two meters. That's two meters, that's four. And that, which is 1200. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 16 meters, 16, 17, oh, it's two and a half, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Only 21 meters. I think they come in maybe five meter lengths. So we'll be getting five lengths. Hey, I'm pretty good on this math thing, aren't I? It also occurred to me the insulation doors, the door panels that we're putting in, are going to want hollow angle around them as well. So if we order 50 meters, I think we'll have enough. So to get up there and measure the thickness of those boards because that's going to determine the dimensions of the hollow angle that I'm going to need. So we're not quite come to the garden centre, we've come to Home Bargains. The place where you get bargains. You come in. For your home. Oh, we got ourselves a few nice little bits, look. Some primroses to go into the casks, the compost. And I've got a drainer for the kitchen side, you know when I'm washing the stuff on a brew day it kind of gets in the way a little bit and uh, some pansies as well, don't they look nice? Look at them purples I'm turning into a right Charlie Dimmock It's Freddy Drainpipe, he looks pleased to see us doesn't he? He always is Well we've got quite a pile of rubble down here so what I'm going to do just kind of get rid of a load of it into the bottom of here to provide some drainage. Ooh. 
that'll do for that. Ah, so there's four. And what we're going to do is just rip open these bags of compost. This one's a bit wetter than the first one did. So the plan is to have a central ornate plant and then we'll surround it with like pansies or primroses depending on what suits. So this bad boy, Dronosium or Dronokium or whatever it's called, is going to live smack bang in the middle. I think he's big enough to kind of live here on his own. I think the Hebe will want some companions. We'll maybe go. and that's finished us off for the day so we've got the yellow flowers set over there on the scales by the door we've got the hebe and some other bits and then we've got some uh, random pansies just sat down here he needs a home and then everything else has gone in the border where there's been a gap to give it a little bit of winter colour and then obviously they'll steady back during the summer the perennials will take over and then the cycle will begin again and i think they'll come back next year even stronger so it's gonna look great in here anyway there's still this lot to do through here which i don't think i'll be getting around to for some time yet so i think we're going to make this into our herb garden eventually when we get around to doing it but i've just rang Gemma. she's on her way to pick me up so we're going to wrap it up for the day that's it until tomorrow's vlog and uh, we'll be in York for that. So uh, join us for it if you fancy. We'll see you then.